This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Turn it on. Yes, sir. We're back at 4 p.m. It's uh, Think Tech Asia. And of course, it's with Russell Liu, uh, an American lawyer practicing and teaching in China, in Beijing, who uh, joins us here today to talk about a very important subject, money. And money is a very important day-to-day -day subject today because we lost 1,100 points in the U.S. stock market, something to do with the emperor's new clothes. You okay, know, Russell, welcome to the show, Russell. I'm glad to be back, Jay. And, and you know, the, and, and you're talking about money. It's really a big holiday period coming up in China. Next week, we're going to see floods of Chinese tourists going around the world. Money, okay? And one of the things we say, Shin and Kwai La. And as you know, we, if, out on the streets in Honolulu, we're getting more global. Bank of Hawaii has a big banner. Let's take a look Let's at what it looks like. Oh, yeah. What does it say? Shin and Kwai La? A few minutes ago, our cameraman was out there, got this great shot that says, Shin and Kwai La, Happy New Year. So they're getting ready. They're getting ready because it's a time of holiday Chinese. It's always red. The color's good luck uh -huh. because they pass these red envelopes called hongbaos with money in it. But we're going to talk about this today, Jay, how it's come a cashless society. Everybody gets their red packets or hongbao over their it's smartphone. It's so interesting. You know that um, the U.S., as a leader, starting, what, in the 50s with American Express, got into this whole, whole notion of credit cards, and then credit cards proliferated you know, all over the world, ubiquitous, actually. Um, but now, um, with technology, the Chinese and other countries in Asia are leapfrogging over all of that, um, and they're, they're finding another way for you to make purchases without using a credit card, which is much more efficient. And, and you've been following this. I know how much you, you admire this system, Russell. So tell us how it works. Sure. You know, as you just said, Jay, you know, Americans, we pioneered the credit card system. We pioneered a system that relies on gathering credit information, checking out to see, and it's really using money, foreign money. It's using against future earnings. But this way, the Chinese don't do it that way. It's a cashless society. We don't carry cash. You know, Carl Malden used to come on the television advertisements with American Express. He used to say, don't leave your American Express at home. Don't be without it. Carl right? Malden, boy, that's a name out of the Streets past. Streets of San Francisco. <laughs> you know, that tells her age. Sure. But again, the Chinese say now, don't leave your smartphone at home because it contains the apps. WeChat don't lose and Alipay. <laughs> and don't lose it. But um, again, you know, uh, in China, we don't carry cash anymore. Um, the typical person will carry maybe 100 renminbi for the whole month in your wallet and you carry a smartphone. You don't use it unless it's a backup. You know, it's interesting because in China, 84% of the population uses no cash, a cashless society. Yeah, well, okay, I mean, cashless society, um, it's, it's interesting because you don't have to have a credit card. You can get along without any credit cards, at least in China right now. Um, you have to, it's kind of like a debit card, this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and or things is more than one of them, I think. Um, and um, uh, you can spend really any amount you want as long as you have it in your bank. And it's instantly transmitted, you know, instantly, you get instant credit for it, you buy anything you want using a QR code from your phone. So you shine the QR code at, say, in a newspaper stand, am I right? That's right. And then you get a newspaper, and the whole, the whole transaction is immediate. But it goes from there way beyond. Can I buy a car with a QR code? I'm sure you can. I'm not a, I'm not a rich Chinese. I can't take my car. <laughs> I just not enough money to bank. You still have to have cash in the bank. You may not be rich, but you're, you're famous, Russell. Yes. But you know what's interesting? It's the Chinese who started the cash. 2,800 years ago, China invented the paper money. And now, full circle, now they're inventing a new form of money, a new platform, a new payment platform. It's a cashless society. So they've come full circle, you know, uh, where they're innovative, but they're using technology. So now, within the past years, five years, the movement has been towards a cashless society. And this is very interesting because this cashless society means that everything that the Chinese will do whether it's going to the supermarket, the fruit stand, um, you, you just flash a QR code, the vendor will scan it. Let's take a look and see what a QR code looks like. This is my well, QR code. We've all code. seen QR codes. There it is. There it is. This is a typical QR code on um, the WeChat system. And if you notice the QR code, 
Mr. P, that's my identify handler. That QR code also has information in my bank, okay? Contact information. Now it's interesting because- That's it, your picture. That's my picture. So the, your picture is embedded in the QR code. Yes, it's embedded. And it's very interesting because in 2011, when Tencent, the big tech giant in China, out of Shenzhen, China, started this WeChat, they didn't envision don't it. Don't leave that on too long. Somebody's gonna copy it and, and uh, you oh, know. Oh, don't worry. Steal your it, identity, It'll be protected Russell. because that's what they, Tencent started, Ali, uh, WeChat. We would just flash a QR code. Uh, somebody that just met us, we wouldn't pass cards around anymore. We don't pass out our mobile phone number. They would scan that QR code. And that QR code would go online into their system and then I could communicate with them. But fast forward, after 2011, they came up with the idea if we could use it something more meaningful. And that's because Alibaba came out with Alipay. And both systems work on the same idea, that you take your QR code, the vendor will scan it, or the vendor will have their own QR code. And with their QR code, also on our smartphones through WeChat, we use a scanner. It'll scan that QR card code, and it will ask how much you want to pay. And we transfer the money instantaneously to the vendor. So that- So what, it goes both ways. It goes both it ways. It could be your QR code uh -huh. or his QR code. And it's very interesting because people ask, well, where did this technology come from? You know, it's interesting because this technology actually came out in the 90s by the Japanese automobile makers. What they would do was, instead of using the traditional barcode, they developed this QR code system. Q and R, what does it mean? Quick response. And so they, that's how they keep track of the cards, they slap that QR code. And you know, that's the genesis of the QR code. Is this like the octopus card in Hong Kong? You know, yeah, well, the octopus part is for the subway. But in China, you go to Shanghai, you can use some, I believe now they're starting to use it, or the Q code, you can QR code, you can get on the subway. With the QR uh, code. QR so code. it's just another thing you can buy yes, with another, the QR code. Yeah. And so what's really interesting is that this QR code can do many things. You can buy things, buy groceries, buy clothes, you can buy your train tickets, you can buy uh, your movie tickets, you can use it to uh, pay the taxi driver, um, many, many things. Or you can use it even to invest money. But you know, getting back to the New Year's for the Chinese. And this is an important occasion because we send money to our friends and family. Usually our family, and so the old days. So the red the, envelopes. The, I didn't bring it today, I, sh I had one in you my pocket. You can imagine what it looks uh, like. You know, we, we, Envelope it, well, that's red. The reason why in Hawaii somebody gave me one, in Hawaii we're still behind in the US. <laughs> we have to give them out of the red packet. <laughs> so in China, they would, we would use our, uh, our um, uh, WeChat, and we can actually send the money, and it has a red envelope. So you, oh, but the red envelope is on the screen. It's on it's the not screen. It's a real red envelope. It's a red envelope, and it'll have the Hongbao, and we would put in the amount, and we would just send it to our WeChat. So the, and the other guy gets a red envelope on his screen. That's right. And he gets a payment into his account using WeChat. That's right, exactly. And so, you know, you could be in one part of China, you could be in your hometown, maybe some village, as long as you have a little smartphone. You know, and your son is out in Beijing. Oh, this is so send you this money. Is so different than a credit card, really, because in a credit card, you you wind up. As you, you mentioned it, the credit card is with credit, and it catches up later. But with uh, this this kind of QR code and WeChat, the cashless society, it goes both ways. So you can put money into your account, take money out of your account, and so forth. Uh, and theoretically, if you can balance it, you never actually have to put money in, cash money. Mm -hmm. There is no cash going in, it all happens inside that account. Well, and what's a, what's a fascinating thing about it is, as Americans, you know, we look and say, well, the Chinese are very smart because they realize that every time that money transfers from one account to the it's cash flow. It's it's moving the society. It, it's, 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 it's a robust sure, economy. Sure, that's right, too, that's and, correct. And, and just economics every time, point of view. economics point of view, it's a multiply effect yeah. and it becomes a very strong society. Yeah. Now, in a credit card, you have to you have to pay credit card fees. I mean, American Express they charge you annual fee. Others too, sometimes. Uh, and of course, if you're you know if you're late by you know just a, a few days, you wind up paying. I said like late, but if you don't pay immediately, you wind up paying interest at some really exorbitant rate. Even now, even when interest rates at the Fed are really low, you still pay a lot of interest on any credit card. Yeah. What? So, but mm -hmm. on the WeChat thing, on the QR code, on this cashless society, you already have the money in your account. That's right. So there is essentially, am I right? No charge in doing this, no charge. There is no charge. And it's fascinating because it's, it's a changing the world because 
a lot of developing countries where there's no credit rating system. It's too expensive to develop that. Uh, it takes too long. Uh, and people won't have get access to credit anyway. They're starting to adapt what the Chinese are doing in China because it comes out of your bank account. So you spend what you have. And it's really interesting, Jay, because no Chapter 7 bankruptcies, no Chapter 13. You pay what you have. You don't pay against borrowed money, uh, borrowed time. So so it works in a, as a functional practice of thing because you, you know how much money you've gotten and to bank. You, you are it. And so you what are about it. I, I work for an employer, right? And, I, and I'm going to get um, some RMB at the end of the pay period. Do they pay me in my in my account, that well, same cashless account? Well, you know, I don't work for a Chinese employer, so I don't know. But I know that Chinese New Year, they send the red packets with money in there yeah. for employees. That's your yeah. bonus. Yeah. And it goes instantaneously to your account. And you, you know what it strikes me is well, that... What about compensation? I get into a contract, right? Yes. And he owes me 1,000 RMB a week. Okay, is he going to put that RMB in my account? Or is he going to pay me by some other method? I'm sure that's being done through WeChat. I am positively sure it's doing WeChat. You know, because what happens is the employer will, will take the deductions out uh, for the uh, taxes every month, the income tax. And what happens is that uh, the accountant will just simply use WeChat from the account and just pay the employees. Yeah, I mean, that would be the most I mean, efficient well, thing of and all. And it's great because, you know, the employee doesn't have to worry about going to the bank. It frees up the bank from long lines. Yeah. It, it, it also limits the possibility that people are going to steal your paycheck or you lose sure. your paycheck. Uh, and and it, it takes care of multiple problems. Remember, the Chinese are very practical. They're very pragmatic. So this is a great way where you just become efficient. Time is money. So Jay. if I have one of these accounts, these QR code, uh, or what do you call it, uh, WeChat accounts, do I need to have a bank account also? Or is this, for the average person, his only account? Well, let me say yes and no. Let, let me talk about the second half of the program, about how the impact of WeChat and foreigners. But for the Chinese, everybody has a bank account in China. So it's easy to link. And you so, have, but it's yeah. that account that you use the WeChat That's right. for. That's right. So it's just one account. Then. It's one account. Yeah, and, okay. and so I, like for example, I have a Chinese bank account. And I simply link it to the WeChat account. Also, I link my passport, my photo, and it gets approved. Uh, and there's some tight security on it. So um, when I make the payment, they'll verify it you know, because the vendor's not going to work because the money comes straight to them, and uh, it, it's all there. Like you saw on the, the QR code, it has my picture also. Yeah. But the interesting thing about it is that, you know, how big is the society? Well, the, the, the other fact is not only transmitting money, but the fact is, you know, we talk about cash flow. Cash is kind of is, is churning over constantly. You know, how big of it? Well, in 2015, talking about spending, e-commerce. E-commerce is the big thing in China. You know, Amazon, we're starting to do that now, e-commerce, where Amazon actually sells more clothes than Macy's yeah. through, the, yeah. through, through its yeah. uh, web page. So Alibaba is the Amazon, right, yes. of China. Can I order something on Alibaba with my, my QR code? Well, the, well, actually, uh, for Alibaba, you simply you can order it online. And, um, you know, I, I haven't done it in the Chinese, but you can actually pay through your, 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 your phone, you know. Um, and, and, and you know, uh, it's it's that's how it's done. Um, is it a password or is it a QR code? What but it, I believe most people that have an account with Alibaba, yeah, there's an account. They hit the password and they can make payments. But it's interesting because now Jeff Bezos, Amazon, has set up a mechanism where you can actually in China, you, I can order something from Amazon, the U.S. It yeah. comes on in, yeah, and you'll see in the article it says we ship to China, so they're shipping to China. Sure. And the, the foreign exchange currency issues because they uh, I believe that Amazon has teamed up with either Alibaba or, or Tencent. They, they do a company that will do the foreign exchange simultaneously, uh, the transactions. So, sure. so it's interesting uh, that that's being done. And I want to talk a little later in the show about what's going to happen, the impact of Chinese travelers going abroad. I'll tell you what, what, what WeChat's doing. Yeah, that's I want to ask you one question before we take a break, and that is can you tell me the difference between Tencent and Alibaba, and WeChat Pay, and Alipay. Tencent is the um, founder of WeChat, and WeChat has WeChat Pay, which is part of WeChat. WeChat is a communication. It's yeah. sort of like the Facebook uh, uh, hyper on steroids, okay? <laughs> and and um, Alibaba runs Alipay. And they're two different types of payment system. They're, they're uh, competing. They're competing. And it's, it's interesting, but I'll tell you how big it is. 
Let's first look at the numbers. 2015, we had $1.5 trillion done American over dollars. American dollars through these payment systems. 2016, that more than quadrupled five times, $5 trillion. Oh. 2017, from $5 trillion, it went up to $15 trillion in the economy just in one year. Just in the, Now imagine what I'm talking about. I'm talking about cash flow and a robust economy. And this is, this is only the everyday Chinese More person. money passes and hands, that's the right. the economy is. And they predict that by 2021, we're gonna hit, they're going to hit the $45.5 trillion mark. Fantastic. Uh, you know, it, it's fantastic to know that. Um, you can have more uh, than one account. Do you people can, have more than one account? Do they have the, uh, what do you call the WeChat Pay and the Alipay both? Yes, they do. it. I have both. Do you? Yeah. I do both. Why? And, why? Well, I'll tell you why. It's interesting. The demographics are very different. Um, they, they find out that Alipay are used more by the high wealth people. So I suppose that the products, maybe you can buy a car out of Alipay, is, is uh, are these people through Alipay. I think that Alipay has a greater percent, maybe 50% of the market. I believe WeChat has 40%. Uh, so close, they're close. Apple, Apple Pay is 1%. Yeah, how about Amazon Pay? Uh, I don't know. Jeff Bezos is making a move, and he's going to te he's going to team up with probably one either Alibaba sure, you'll have to make or, a or Tencent. You know that, yeah. that that's going to be much more effective. Yeah. So so you can see the size of this. It's 84% well, of the society is using its cash. We don't carry cash. After this break, I want to cover two things with you that are really worth discussing. Number one is how the Chinese, how the Chinese government is expanding this whole notion to outside of China. And, you know, what is the purpose of that? What is the effect of that? Uh, and what, what, what is the future of that? The second I want to, thing I want to discuss as we come back is the dark side. The dark side. There's a dark side to WeChat Pay and Alipay. And if you want to know, you have to wait. We'll be right back. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, go, go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. What big eyes you have, she said. What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push! Ah! Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me. Okay, <clears throat> the second thing I was, you know, the second cliffhanger was the thing about the dark side. And Russell, let me be clear about it. What I meant by that is, uh, is something that uh, Richard Hornick talked about at the China seminar a few weeks ago, and he'll be on the program to talk about it again. And that is the way the Chinese government is collecting data on people and trying to do mind control, his term. Um, and so uh, my understanding is that everything you do in the economy, mm -hmm. Every time you exercise your QR code, every time you buy or sell something in this <laughs> cashless society, it goes, it's available to the government, and the government mm, rates you on just exactly where you are in life. Uh, and if you're a good guy, according to the government standard, whatever that may be, uh, then you get benefits. And, and if you're not such a good guy, you don't get benefits, and you get barred from things. And so everybody has a, like a little profile, and part of the profile is this account. Mm -hmm. So correct me, Russell, this is your chance. Well, here's where we look at it. Um, you're looking through the sunglasses of an American talking about the political issues. I'm looking through the sunglasses of a Chinese, which is clear. And I'll, I'll be honest, I, does Richard live in China full time anymore? No. And I live in China full time 15 years. There's, I, I really don't care because you know what? As long as I'm not doing anything illegal, why should I care? It helps me and the conveniences of life. And you know, through a different culture where you have 1.3 billion people, how do you keep order? 
And it's important because with this kind of system, people do things differently. For example, I go to Best Buy, I leave my sunglasses next to the counter. I walk back, I forgot, oops, run back. It's happened to me. You know, three, four minutes later, sunglasses are gone. Lost and found. Oh, nobody turned it in. People don't turn it in. In China, I've lost my wallet three times, but with the cameras watching around, people in society now, they don't take it. They've actually turned it in three times, twice in the rail station you know, and once in the... It's funny you should say that. I don't know if I ever told you, but my second trip to China, uh, I left my wallet at the, um, in the TSA security, um, security line coming into the country. And uh, I left it there. My God, it's incredible. You, you know, you arrive in a foreign country, you leave your wallet somewhere. Okay, this is a really horrendous thing. And uh, I'm walking away. I'm, I'm you know, hundreds of yards away down this big airport, you know, hallway. And there's a guy chasing me. One of the security guys is chasing me to give me my wallet back. Oh, my God. I was so relieved, you know, when I got my wallet back. But I was also very impressed that they would chase me. And he said, you know, be careful next time. Don't leave your wallet around. <laughs> well, I mean, that's it happened. It really touched me, I tell you. Well, that's happened to me recently. I dropped my wallet, and a girl, two girls came running after me, calling me, here's your wallet. And, you know, I found that it, it's created a lot of order in society. Uh, and, you know, we have to realize that, that, you know, China is, I'm a guest of the country, and they will have to do what they have to do. But, you know, I've lived there 15 years, and I, 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 I talk about like this. China is like a 50-lane freeway. There's a lot of room you can go as long as you don't cross the edges and get into political things. You can, it, most people are in that situation. So who cares? You know, they have a national ID system, but maybe a lot of things work. You know, they have cameras in the street to watch cars that are causing tra uh, traffic infringements, speeding. But we have cameras too now. We start to have cameras here. Again, all of these things, again, are different cultural and different foundational concepts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I find that, again, maybe Richard Hornick, uh, you know, I lived there full time and it's, it's easy to criticize when you're outside. It really <laughs> is, you know. But imagine now that you have WeChat. Sure, the laws are different. The cybersecurity laws, you know, the government have, has these laws where they want to watch for terrorism and so forth. They have a backdoor to the server. Yes, if you're a multinational doing business in China, uh, you're worried about your IP being protected. But again, that's an issue that uh, I'm not. You know, okay, interested. I appreciate that, and uh, you know, I, I want your view of it, and I and I agree with you that if one thing China has established, it's uh, the stability of the society. Mm -hmm. It is compared to other countries quite stable, and successful economically. Um, uh, but I wanted to go to one other point with you, and that is the the spread of this whole cashless society mm -hmm. thing, um, whether and to what extent China has exported this kind of technology, this kind of, you know, transactional arrangement to other countries, and why? Let's look at a two-prong analysis. First is, what impact does it have? Is it, has there lessons that Americans can learn from? And let's go back to the Amazon Go store. Amazon Go, uh, a few weeks ago, opened their first store in Seattle, which is unmanned. Uh, to get in, you have your Amazon account, and you scan your QR code. That clicks to your account. And anything you take off the shelf, clicks, it charges your account. You pay for it that way. Artificial and intelligence. That's artificial intelligence. And where do they get it from? Well, the Chinese have been using it, the scanner, the QR code. So that impact is making its way um, even into the U.S. We're going to see more of that. I predict more of that. Um, the cost of doing business in the U.S., the brick and mortar, the labor cost, we're going to be more and more into a service economy. You know, you won't have a lot of Macy's with salespeople. Macy's on, I believe Macy's has their uh, artificial intelligence or uh, some sort of model they're working on, uh, and, and Walmart has something like that. So it's in the works, it's in the pipeline. So there is an effect on it, okay? Um, second of all, so is this model, this pay model, is it making an impact around the world? Yes, it is. Through Southeast Asia, Singapore is considering yeah. India. Uh, has the government has just adopted this? They're moving towards a cashless society. They're following the Chinese. Well, are, they, are they following the Chinese? Right. But it's not the Chinese system. It's not the you Chinese system. I mean, system. I was speculating with you last time we talked about the Amazon store. Uh, the I'm, I forget the title of it. The Amazon, the Amazon store. Um, that the Amazon would try to export their technology to other places and sell it to retailers hither and yon. Uh, is that what's happening in India? 
Is it the Chinese selling their technology to India, or is it India, you know, emulating what the Chinese are doing? India in China? is emulating it. However, let's look what Mastercard's doing. Mastercard has got an agreement with China Union Pay, and they're trying to create a universal system that is very similar to this. Um, so they're going into Africa um, uh, again with the QR code. So that's a new industry standard that's being set. It's set up by a company called EMVCO. Is that a and Chinese company? That's that's a uh, it's a, a it's a group that's put together by I believe Mastercard, Visa, and China Union Pay. And that, who? China Union Pay. Okay. Oh, so China it's, Union it's, Pay. So it's, it's going out for venture between yes the American Mastercard or global Mastercard companies and 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 China. Right. So they've set up in Africa the QR code system, and they were in Nigeria where they had some success. So we're seeing this making its way around the world. And why is it successful? It's because it's, it's where most of the world, it's not like the US, most of the world are developing. <laughs> it seems more like the, the case every day, actually. And so, but it's interesting because Visa and MasterCard, they can't operate in these worlds. So they've got to change their product. Yeah. And so they, they're adapting and they've got to work with the Chinese to come out with a product because if not, they're going to be extinct well, dinosaurs. Are, are you saying that although India right now is emulating China in this regard, because it's India is fully capable of developing its own technology. I mean, they got a lot of technology in India, uh, a lot of smart techno technology, you know, technology people. Um, are you saying though that over time, uh, not only will people emulate China, but they will want to use and be networked on the Chinese system, uh, so that the, and China would like to see that happen. I know where you're getting at, Jay. Yeah, I know where you're getting yeah, at. Go ahead. You're a lawyer, so go ahead. So where you're getting at is. Now, are these systems merging? Are the China technologies being used out of China? Yes. Um, WeChat, Tencent, has recently um, has been working on a plan, um, and what that plan is, it provides that you have to, we talked earlier in the first part of the show, you've got WeChat on your phone, don't you? I do. Now, what they're doing, they believe they're teaming up with, I believe, MasterCard or one of them, and they're allowing the linkage on WeChat with your MasterCard or Visa so that you can use it, and the transaction will automatically go to your card. Right, and the likelihood there is that it's gonna go in the direction of the QR arrangement, the cashless society arrangement, the debit approach, rather than the credit card approach, where you, you have all these other charges and, and where there are security issues that are ultimately, you know, charged to the consumer somehow. Yes. Yes. Um, so what, what, what I suggest from what you've said is that over time, we will have a global system uh, that uh, that the Chinese will have a part of it, um, that the that the Mastercard, Visa, you know, standard American credit cards may migrate in that direction. Um, well, in, in fact, Mastercard has MasterPass, which is a debit card. Yeah. So we're going to see that link with, for example, yeah, but with it won't WeChat. Be a card anymore. Well, that means it's going to change to retailers. They're going to people aren't going to have a card. Right. It's going to be linked to that account. In the Amazon it's store, it's just a QR code well, when they well, walk in. They took it from the Chinese. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, that's yeah, the same yeah. thing. But it, but now you can download WeChat in the Apple Store or Samsung, and uh, now they are going to allow it. So it links to like your debit card, MasterPass, or something. Okay. Where, what, what about security? I mean, you know, we worry about credit card, uh, you know, uh, uh, terrorism and credit card theft of identity and all this. So if we have the cashless society mm -hmm. and a debit card basis, how safe are we? Are we safer than with credit cards? Well, that's because that that hinges on government regulations of that industry, government regulations of, of, of WeChat and Apple Pay. Can somebody WeChat. knock off my QR you code? Know, and, and, Can somebody copy it and then take money out of my account, buy things out mm, of my account? But I still believe that a lot of places now, you have a QR code, but now a lot of vendors will show you only their QR code and you scan their QR code. And you scan their QR code so your QR code doesn't go out, you see? Well, some vendors will scan your QR code, but in China, the standard more is, I see more is that more vendors will have their QR code on a sign, mm -hmm. and you just simply scan that. Mm -hmm. And so far, I haven't heard of any major threat from these retailers. You go to every store, large stores, small stores, everybody has their little QR code on the placards. Okay, so maybe with that kind of technology, the, you know, the possibilities are limitless, really. Um, we can minimize the security issues that we have now. We have yes. plenty of security well, issues now. Th that, that gets to another thing, Jay. You know, it's, it's fascinating because, again, what WeChat is doing is they're letting foreigners to 
you get on WeChat, link your account, you can buy things wherever you got the QR code. Okay. Second of all, that's the first step. The second step is they're working on agreements now where WeChat, the Chinese outbound travelers, which is a huge industry, will be able to link their account to retailers in the U.S. wherever they travel, use the QR code. The retail industry is going to change, and I'm, I'm certain it's going to change just by that. And it's, it's, it's going back to the question, where are we in Hawaii? Are we up to this? Do we know about it? You know, and, and it'll be a great boon because imagine going across borders. Instead of carrying 10,000, they carry a smartphone. Well, clearly, clearly, this is all leading to a global system. Yes. A global way of spending money, a global way of consuming and consumerism. It's uh, a global way of doing business, really, uh, on so many levels. <clears throat> and I guess the question, which we'll, we'll have to leave it at this question, because uh, we're out of time, the question is, if you have a global system, a global payment system like this, whether it be you know uh, emanating from China or elsewhere, whether it be um, the, the purely uh, WeChat thing or some kind of hybrid, um, when you make a system like this global, do you increase the risk of some kind of global collapse, some kind of global you know meltdown, or or is it safe? Is it safe, Russell? You don't have to answer that. Well, so far, it's been safe while I'm in China. <laughs> There's a lot of government regulations in place in China. Um, I feel very confident. Um, uh, and um, from what I've seen is that there are problems, yes, uh, that they have to work out. Uh, again, it's really going to be the government that's going to have to back yeah. it to make sure that, you know, you won't have a lot of these issues. Great, um, great discussion, Russell. Great, great important topic. Well, let's, let's do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Great. Great. Russell, I'll be you. back in China. Okay, we'll do it in China. We'll catch you by yeah. Zoom in China, yeah. Great. Xin Yin Kuai Yes, Xin Yin Kuai